I was going to start this video by saying there's more than one way to skin a cat, but I, I, I really like cats. So today we're going to look at the live paint bucket tool in Adobe Illustrator. Now the reason I say that is because there's more than one way to color your strokes and fill in your fills once you've got your design done. Now before we get going on this, go down in the description and hit the download link to grab the file that we're working on. It's still a stroke file, so there's no fills or anything on it, and that way you can follow along with me in this video. And if this is your first time here, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you don't miss anything. Hit the notification bell, and that way every time I upload a video, which is going to be another 18 days in a row for this series. And then after that, we're going to go to weekly content. So don't worry, I won't be annoying you every day. Okay, so once you have the file, we're going to hop over into Adobe Illustrator and I'm going to walk you through how to use the live paint bucket tool. All right, so here we are inside of Illustrator. Now, this is the piece that we're going to be working on. I've given you the outline for this lantern, none of the colors, none of the background, anything like that, just the lantern itself. I didn't include the flies either. This is a piece that I worked on a few months ago. It was actually a piece that I did before I started really using the live paint bucket tool very often. But we're going to go back and we're going to visit how to make just kind of the basic colors on this. I'm not going to get into the reflections or anything like that, but I will cover that in a future video sometime in January or February. We're going to come in and I'm going to show you guys how I do my highlights and my shadows and all that kind of stuff. So let's hop over to the file that you should have downloaded from the description. If you didn't, pause it here, go grab the file and come meet me back in Illustrator. I've laid it out so this is the main piece that we're going to be coloring and if you notice it's all still just strokes there's no paths on here or there's sorry there's no shapes i haven't outlined it and this is the way that your files should be if you're working with the live paint tool the nice thing about it is that that way i can still go back and manipulate things if i need to make changes after i get this colored whereas if i expand my stroke first then start painting in. Well, if I need to make colors, if I didn't drag a copy over, then I got to control Z back to where I'm back to an outline. It's just a hassle. So one pro tip for this, if you're working on vectors, always take a copy, alt, and drag it over to the side. And now I have a stroked copy in case things go wrong on this piece. So we're going to start by actually just double clicking on the icon in the taskbar. Now you'll see it right here. You can also hit K on your keyboard and that'll highlight it for you. So you get the little dark background around the icon so you know which one you're dealing with. And we're gonna double click there. And that gives us our live paint bucket options. I know this is something that we usually talk about after we've done a few things, but I wanna start out here so that we can see a few differences. Our paint fills or paint strokes, this is what we're actually going to be painting. I can have both or one or the other checked off. So if I take paint fills, that's what we're going to be doing right now. If I want to paint strokes, I can leave this option on. And as we click over this, we can actually change the color of the stroke on this. We're going to stick with fills right now and then cursor swatch preview. So this is a little box that shows up above and I'll show you what this is. You can turn this off if you want to. I like to have it on. Um, it, it's a personal preference really. And then whether or not we want to highlight and how thick and what color that highlight is. And I'll show you what the highlight means. So for now, we're just going to go ahead and we're going to leave this the way it is. So make sure you got paint fills checked, paint strokes is unchecked, everything else checked and just kind of left with the standard options here. So click OK. Now I'm going to go and I'm going to get my selection tool or hit V on my keyboard and highlight the whole piece. So just click and drag around the whole piece and you should have everything highlighted. From there, I'm going to hit K on my keyboard again, right, which gets us to our live paint bucket tool. Now, if you notice right now, that little box that's above my pointer, and you can see how it's changing colors, I'm just hitting the left and right arrow keys. I can also go up and down to select different color options. But what this is, that's that swatches preview. You can turn it off. Some people find it annoying. I don't mind it, so I'm just going to leave it on. Another key that I should talk about the arrow itself above the paint bucket, not the paint bucket itself, is where you're selecting. So I like to make sure that I've got it on transparent before I do my first click. This is another reason I like to leave the swatches on so I can see kind of what this initial color is. So now that I'm here, I'm just going to hover anywhere over and you see how it highlights with that red stroke. And we're just going to click once. What this has done now is we now have our live paint bucket object. 
and you can see as I hover over each one of these little shapes, I get that little red outline. That was that four stroke path that we were talking about or the four stroke preview in red. And these are my separate objects that I can go and fill in. Now, one thing I should note before we go too much further, something that I like to do is hop into my preview mode. So command Y on your keyboard. And what this is actually going to give us is an outline view of everything. So you can see these are all of our separate objects. The reason I do this is because I want to check for gaps in my design. So if we come in and we look, there's little spaces that we've got. And this one here is, is one that is going to be an issue. There's another one here. There's a little one here. Now I cleaned all of this up and I actually came back in before I sent the file to you guys and kind of gave this a few gaps so that you could see how this works. But it's a good habit to get into is to start checking for gaps like this and fixing them, especially if you're going to be handing this off to a client and they might be working with it themselves or if you're giving this to other designers to work with. Stuff like this, these are the little things that really make the difference between a high-end designer and kind of an entry-level designer. Fixing the little mistakes and paying close attention to the small details is really it, it just makes a difference. It makes a huge difference. So for this instance, the reason I came in here is because I want to show you if we go up to object and we're going to come down to live paint and we're going to go gap options. And from here, we have a few different choices. So we can turn on gap detection or we can turn it off. If you turn it off, it's not going to show anything. And if I click OK again, I'm going to go Command Y one more time to get back out to our main selection. I'm going to go K. Now remember, we got gap detection is off. So if I go Command Zero to zoom out and we start highlighting over top of these, well, look, like now I can fill this one, I can fill this, this, these, we're all good here. But when I get up where those gaps were, you see how that, it doesn't give me that red outline. It means I can't fill those shapes with the live paint bucket. So it's not going to allow me to. I can click on this. Let's just select a color. I'm going to go option to get my little eyedropper. I'm going to click and I've got that green that I want to start using. Well, I can fill this one, but I can click over here all day long and it's never going to pick up that color. So let's go back up again. I'm going to go object, live paint. I'm going to go back down to gap options. And we're going to turn gap detection back on. So now you can see I got these little red dots and what those are, those are all my gaps. And if we zoomed in again in outline mode, you'd be able to see them. You can close the gaps. I prefer not to, and I'll show you why. Let me cancel out of this. Go Command Y one more time. I'm gonna hit Z to zoom in. I'm gonna zoom into that one there, right? This is the one I'm most concerned with. And the reason I'm most concerned with it, See how this one curves up really nice and, and I've still got that nice flowing curve on there. Well, that's the way that this one should be. So if we go up one more time, object, live paint, gap options, and I gap detection again. I'm going to turn that. Well, see this? This is what Illustrator is going to do if you close the gaps with paths. It's going to draw a straight line. Now, in this instance, it might not make that much of a difference because we have some pretty thick lines on here. But if you're working with something that's smaller lines or thinner stroke on your lines, you're going to have a problem because this should be going this way. So I prefer not to. I like to leave. I, I usually do medium gaps. Now, like I said, I come in and fix this stuff before I actually use the live paint bucket. But in this instance, we're not going to. I'm just going to leave it at medium gaps and that way we get everything closed off. So I'm going to hit OK. We're going to go Command Y to get out of this and we're going to go Command Zero to zoom back out and then I'm going to hit K on my keyboard. I know it's a lot of keyboard shortcuts you guys. I use keyboard shortcuts because in my workflow it just makes things quicker for me. I'm not having to go over here and think about anything. Learn your keyboard shortcuts as much as possibly can. All right so now to get coloring this thing. So you can see now we've got all of our separate shapes and it's just a simple matter of picking a color and then choosing where you want that color to go. I'm going to hold down Alt or Option and I'm going to click on my green and that's going to fill up my eyedropper. You can see how it got kind of half full there on the icon. And I'm going to come back over here and I'm just going to start clicking into the shapes that I want to be that green color. So there's all my green done. Now I'm going to grab my blue, which is going to be our glass. And we're going to do these ones. And again, this is something I'm going to cover later on because I actually don't want these as separate shapes, but 
come back in January and we're going to go back in and talk about how to make glass and how to make shadows and highlights and all that kind of stuff. So now I'm going to grab my gray and my first gray is going to be this one. And we're going to fill this one and that one. Grab my darker gray and do just a single shape here. Option click to get my yellow. Option click to get my brown. And there we have our colored in shape. So there's one last thing I need to do because this, if I click here, you can see that we've got this bounding box with these little shapes inside. This tells me that this is still live paint bucket object and I don't want that anymore. I want to be able to change the colors without having to worry about anything. So I need to go up to object, live paint, and we have two different options. We can go release or we can go expand. Well, if I go release, that's a problem. It just released everything. So it got rid of the color, got rid of the stroke. Now, if I were having major issues and I saw, you know what, there's a bunch of problems here. I don't like the swatches. I need to do new swatches. And I just want to start over. Release is a good thing because now I can actually create my new stroke up to where I want it and start from scratch again. I don't want that. So I'm going to just control Z or command Z, get back to my live paint object. And I'm going to go object, live paint, and this time we're going to go expand. So when I expand it, it's now no longer a live paint bucket. You can see I've got the regular bounding box back. The only issue here is that I need to ungroup this and it's, it's a few different groups at this point. So I'm gonna go Shift Command G and I'm gonna watch right over here. See this quick actions? If you're not seeing this, you're gonna to wanna to open up your properties panel, which you should be able to do just by going through Essentials Classic or by going up to Window and coming down to Properties. And the reason I'm doing this is because as soon as this says group, I know that this is fully ungrouped. So I'm going to go Shmif, Shift Command G and again. And see how I've got this Pathfinder now that this is expanded open. So I think one more should do it. And there we go. Now we've got group and each one of these is now a separate piece that I can go in and use to make my shadows and my highlights and everything else. I should also mention it didn't expand my stroke so I can still make changes to this now my next step would be to go in change this option over to paint strokes and then I can go back in select this create a new live paint bucket object and start filling my strokes and I do my strokes all the same color for a piece like this so no matter what discipline you're looking at whether it be designing logos creating vector art or just making business cards for clients Finding ways to cut time out of your workflow is always a smart move. Hopefully the paint bucket has helped you do that. And along with some of these other tutorials that I'm going through, you should be able to start learning these tools and shaving time off of your designs, which in turn, as a freelancer, is going to help you make money. All right, designers. So like I said at the beginning, I have 18 more of these videos to make. So I need to get back to work and get out there and design something. And I'll see you in the next video. This was take three of that whole thing, like the intro. I shoot the intro and then I do the outro. So I do like the hook, the intro, the outro. I shoot all of those together. Take three. Not too bad. Why can't I get that?